What's up, first graders? Today we are doing lesson 116 for the Saxon Phonics program. And my name is Miss Smith, in case you didn't know. Okay, I wanna do a vowel song to start off with that maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but you have to know three moves in a row. You pat your hips or your legs, pat, clap, snap. And if you can't snap, that's okay. You can just, you can just bring your hands out like this and then you go back to a clap and back down, okay? So we're going to go pat, clap, snap, like that. And while we do that, we're going to do one of my favorite vowel songs. It's, do you know the vowel song, the vowel song, the vowel song? Do you know the vowel song? And then we'll do our sign language, A, E, I, O, U, Okay, so we're gonna start with pat, clap, snap, do you know? Ready? Do you know the vowel song, the vowel song, the vowel song? Do you know the vowel song? A, E, I, O, U. Nice job. So those are our vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Again, keep that in the back of your mind because it'll be important for today's lesson a little bit later. Let's move to our letter cards, starting ghost digraph KN. Ready? Ghost digraph KN, ghost digraph GN, ghost digraph WR, digraph PH, digraph EY, diphthong OU, digraph UE, digraph OA, combination UR, Digraph AU, diphthong digraph OW, combination ER, vowel Y, digraph AW, digraph EA, digraph CH, combination OR, combination AR, final syllable TION, combination IR, diphthong OI, Diphthong O Y G Ghost Digraph K N. You got it. Okay, let's do our picture card starting not n. Ready? Not n. Nat n. Wreath fur phone f. Key e. Soap o. Faucet a. Straw a. Mouse ow. Cow ow. Butter er. Star r. Cry I, candy E, horse or, bird er, turtle er, lotion shun, circle s, bow o, leaf E, thread e, eh, steak a, eh, banana a, uh, oil oi, toy oi, glue oo, giraffe j, not n. Yes. Okay. Suffixes ready. Suffix less, suffix lee, suffix s, z, suffix t, d, ed, suffix ing, suffix ness, suffix es, suffix e, suffix less. You got it. Okay, we are ready now to come to our worksheet. And you might know this already, but in case you don't, for the spelling sounds, I'll say it pointing to me and then when I point to you, you echo what I just said and then you tell me the letters that make that sound for each of these. Okay, we are starting on number one. S, comma, C, final, S, S, comma, C, E. And then you write it. Number two, ah, oh, good. Number three, er, combination, er, good. Number four, or, combination, or. Number five, R, C, 
combination AR. Lots of combinations. Number six, I, I consonant E, comma I, final vowel Y. Number seven, qu combination Q U. Number eight, oi, diphthong O I, final diphthong O Y. Number nine, E, digraph E, E, comma, E, final, digraph E, E, comma, vowel Y. Woo! And number 10, ooh, is our longest one. I hope you're okay. Number 10, K, K comma C, final, digraph C, K comma, K comma, K, E comma, C. Ooh. And of course, I never fit it all on the line. Okay, by number 11, would you get your choppers out? Tell me the root word and suffix in the word spiked. Root word suffix spiked is spiked. Root word is spike. Spell it by number 11, spike. And if you're trying to remember what says k, after a long vowel, check our sign. Spy, I, I, k. Add your suffix, spiked. Spiked. Give you a clue, it's not a letter T. Okay, spell spiked, ready? S, P, I, K, E, suffix, E, D. Spike, oh wait, 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 wait. Sorry, guess what? Oh no! I just realized that looks like spiky. It looks like digraph EE -E in the middle of the word. Don't you remember? Root word spike. If an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, you drop it. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I'm gonna just draw my little arrow to show. Nope, I should have dropped that. Should just be S P I K E D. Oh man. Okay, number 12, uh, this is a word that means when you really have to try hard to go up a mountain or a hill, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in hiked. Root word suffix hiked is hiked. Root word is hike. Add your suffix, hiked. Hiked. Okay, will you tell me how you spelled it, starting H, ready? H-I-K-E-D. Thumbs up if you remember to drop the E out of root word hike. Good, lots of kids, good, good, good. Okay, as soon as you have spiked and hiked, you're welcome to set your pencil down, and I want you just to look up here for a minute. I have some words here that all end the same way and I want you to listen and um, see if you can hear what sound is the same at the end of each of these words. My turn first. Patch, fetch, itch. What sound was the same at the end of patch, fetch, itch? Three times the sound was ch, ch, ch. You got it, it was the ch sound. We've already learned that digraph CH says ch, 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 but in these words, there's actually three letters that are saying ch, ch, ch. They are 
You can say them if you think you know them. The three letters saying ch are T C H, T C H, and T C H. Ding, ding, ding. This time I was using something called a trigraph to make the ch sound. Now let's talk about what a trigraph is because we've only done one other trigraph. A trigraph is when you have one, two, three letters that come together and make one sound. Can we do that together? We'll say a trigraph is, ready? A trigraph is three letters that come together and make one sound. Nice job. So for TCH, what we would do is go like this. T C H CH and we just leave the CH sound. Can we try it together starting on T? Ready? T C H CH It leaves one sound. Nice job. We code it kind of the same way we code a digraph. We start by underlining it, but then after I underline it, I'm going to cross out the T because I don't actually hear the T sound. I don't say T, ch, T, ch. It's just CH. So I'm going to underline, cross out the T. Underline, cross out. Will you say that with me in the other two words starting underline? Ready? Underline, cross out. Underline, cross out. Nice job. Now it's coded correctly. Except that I have a question for you. Why did I use TCH? Why didn't I just use plain old digraph CH? Because I already knew that one. Why do you have to use TCH in these words? I know what my friend Cash would say. Miss Smith, is it because T is your new favorite letter? <laughs> no. I'll give you a clue. I'm gonna give you just a second to look at it and before I tell you, I'll give you a clue. Pa-a-a-ch, pa-a-a-ch, i-i-i-ch. Do you know it? It's because all of these letters in front of the ch sound are a short vowel. Nice. Wait, a couple kids knew that. It's because all of these are a short vowel. You got it. So if you hear the ch sound after a short vowel, you have to spell it with T-C-H. So let me just put my briefs above there to remind me it's after a short vowel that I use the T-C-H to say ch. Now I have patch, like you put a patch on your clothing if it rips. Fetch, like the dog will fetch a stick and bring it back to you if you throw it. And itch, like, ah, my arm is itching. Okay, now let's come down here. In these words, I also want the same sound at the end. My turn first. Bunch, pouch, march. Okay, I still want bunch, pouch, march. I still want that ch sound, but I'm not going to use trigraph TCH this time, and let me tell you why. I want you to look right here on bunch. Do you notice that this letter N is a consonant? After a consonant, if I want to say the ch sound, I just use a plain old digraph CH. Yep, some kids knew it. Pouch, look right here. Pouch has a diphthong. OU says ow. After a diphthong, I don't use trigraph TCH, I just use digraph CH. Yep, you got it. CH. And look right here at March. March has a combination AR. After a combination, I don't use a trigraph. After the combination, to say the ch sound, I just use digraph CH. Good, a lot of kids knew that. Okay, so let me quick code it and then we're gonna talk about the rule. Do you remember how to code it? Just underline the digraph, ready? Underline the digraph, underline the digraph, underline the digraph. So the rule is, after a short vowel, I use TCH to say ch. 
but after anything else, a consonant, a diphthong, a combination, after anything else, I use plain old digraph CH. So I even made you a sign to help you remember that. And I know what you're going to say. Miss Smith, you're so nice. You didn't have to make us a sign. I know, but I did it anyway. Here you go. It says, after a short vowel, we're going to use TCH. After a consonant or anything else, we're going to use plain old CH. So I'm going to leave this up for a little bit during our lesson so that you can remember how we spell the ch sound because I want to do some practice with it. So would you pull out either a whiteboard or if you're just going to do it on a piece of paper, that's fine. But let's spell some words that have the ch sound. Um, spell first word, spell for me the word batch. What word? Batch. And listen, is that a short vowel? Ba, a, a. It is. So think about how do we spell the ch sound? Batch. Okay, can we check it? Batch should be spelled B A T C H. T C H after that short vowel A. And of course, I should have put my reeve above the A to show it's a short vowel. Did you code the trigraph? Underline cross out. If you did, you know you got it right. Erase, erase. Do you know batch is like a batch of cookies? I love the word batch. And I'm going to scoot this down just a little bit. Okay. Next word uh, is a word that means a hole in the ground. Spell for me the word ditch. What word? Ditch. Code it. Ditch. Okay, let's check it. Ditch should be spelled D I. TCH. We use TCH after short vowel I. And of course, trigraph TCH should be underlined, press out to be coded. Erase, erase. Remember, you're fixing these if they're wrong. Next one, spell for me the word munch. What word? Munch. Munch. might want to think about what comes in front of the ch sound. Okay, time's up. Let's check it. Munch should be spelled M-U-N-C-H. After this consonant N, I'm just using a plain old digraph C-H. Underline the digraph, breathe above the U. Thumbs up if you got it. Oh, good. Lots of kids got it. And if not, you're fixing it. Erase, erase. Next word, hmm, can we get our choppers and suffixes out? Tell me what's the root word and suffix in crunches. Root word suffix crunches is crunch as. Root word is crunch. K -er. K -er. Add your suffix, make it say crunch as crunch as. Okay, you ready? Let's check crunches. Crunches should be C R U N C H E S. So after our consonant N, I used plain old digraph C H, box my suffix as. Breathe above the U. And if you want to put a K back on your C, you can. Erase, erase. Next word, would you get your choppers out? Tell me the root word and suffix in catching. Root word suffix catching is catch. Ing. Root word is catch. What says K in front of A? 
dollar sign if you need to. Catch. Add your suffix. Catch. Ing. Catch. Ing. Okay, let's check it. Root word catch should be spelled C A T C H and a suffix ing, I N G. Did you notice short vowel A? Ka, a, a. After short vowel T C H. Nice job. Erase, erase. Next word is a word that you might need to know for St. Patrick's Day. Choppers out, tell me the root word and suffix in pinched. Root word suffix pinched is pinched. Root word is pinch. Add your suffix pinched. Pinched. Okay, ready? Let's check it. Root word pinch should be P-I-N-C-H-C-H -H after the letter N, consonant N, and a suffix E-D. Breathe above the I, box the suffix. And actually, let's not erase the whole word yet. Could you do me a favor and erase just this little letter N? and trade it for a letter T. Hmm. It doesn't say pinched anymore. Do you know what it says? Read it by yourself. It used to say pinched, now it says pitched. Did you know it? Now it says pitched. You got it with a trigraph TCH, like she pitched the ball. Good work, erase, erase. Okay, and let's do one last one, because sometimes kids ask me, but Miss Smith, what if you hear the ch sound at the beginning of the word? Well, at the beginning of the word, we still just use plain old digraph CH. We only use TCH at the end of a word. And after short vowel. Okay, so last one, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in chips. Root word suffix chips is chips. Root word is chip. Add your suffix, make it say chips. Chips. Okay, let's check it, ready? Root word chip should be C-H-I-P and the suffix S. You got it. Plain old digraph C-H at the beginning. Easy peasy. Okay, erase, erase, or if you have a paper, you can put that away too. But let's go to our worksheet. And before we do that, I wanna show you two new cards that we're going to add to our letter and picture deck. So from now on, when you see this card, I want you to say trigraph T-C-H. Will you try it with me, ready? Trigraph T-C-H, good. Then, to remind us that T-C-H says ch, we're going to do a picture of a patch. And when you see this card, will you say patch, ch? Ready? Patch, ch. One more time. Patch, ch. Nice job. Okay, so those will be in our letter deck from now on. And on our worksheet, we're coming down to the bottom. Let's see, we'll find a place for that. We're coming down to the bottom by number 13, okay? It used to be I said ch, you said ch, what said ch? We said digraph C H. That's still true, but we need to add to that. So here's what we're going to write from now on. What says ch? We're going to say digraph C H. We write it. Final digraph C H because we know we could use C H at the beginning of a word or at the end of a word, like bunch but we need to then put a comma because also at the end of a word we can use trigraph tch will you write it trigraph tch so how we will read this is 
digraph CH, final digraph CH, comma, trigraph TCH. Can we try the whole thing together and see who knows it? Number 13, my turn. Ch. What says ch? Digraph CH, final digraph CH, comma, trigraph TCH. Yes, nice job. Okay. Up at the top by number 14, spell for me the word catch. What word? Catch. Okay, will you spell catch starting C? Ready? C A T C H. You got it. T C H after short vowel A. Next one, number 15. Uh, spell for me the word which. What word? Which. Which. Okay, will you spell which for me starting W? Ready? W I T C H. T C H after short vowel I. Good. Uh, what suffix would you have to add to make it say which as? Which as? Will you add the suffix that would make it say which as? Did you know it? It's a suffix e s. Which as? Good. Number sixteen. Choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in matches. Root word suffix matches is match as. Root word is match. Start root word match. Add your suffix, match, as, and tell me how did you spell matches? Ready? M A T C H E S. You got it. T C H after that short ballet and a suffix as. Okay, starting on our coding section, stay right with me. Even if you're like super fast, let's do it together so we're right and accurate. And then at the end, I have a story to tell you, as always. 17, trigraph TCH. Underline, cross out, breathe above the A. Will you read it with me? Starting on letter P, get ready. P patch. What word? Patch. You got it. 18, box your suffix as. Root word, trigraph TCH. Underline, cross out the T, breathe above the U, K back on the C. Will you read just the root word first, starting CR? Get ready. Cur uh Whole word, crutches. You got it. That word is crutches. Match it. 19 is a compound word and it's super tricky. Trigraph TCH. Underline. Cross out. Breathe above the I. Next word, digraph OA. Underline. Cross out. Macron the O. Will you split it right after the letter H? between those two words. Okay, one word at a time, starting SW. Get ready. Switch. What word? Switch. Next word, B board. What word? Board. Put them together. Switch, board, switchboard. Oh my goodness, that was like a huge word. Switchboard. Good work. Number 20, box your suffix ing. Root word, trigraph, TCH, underline, cross out, breathe above the A. You can put a K back on your C if you want. Root word starting SCR. Get ready. Scratch. Whole word, scratching. Like I'm scratching my arm. 21, trigraph, TCH, underline, cross out, breathe. Starting H. Get ready. Hutch. What word? Hutch. A hutch is like a great big dresser or cabinet and you put plates or cups into it. 22, compound word. Digraph EA says E, underline, cross out, macron. Digraph OO says U, underline. Will you split it right after the letter A? Split those two words. Okay, one word at a time, starting T, get ready. T, spoon, what word? Teaspoon, you got it. 23, Box your suffix ing. 
root word EA says E, underline cross out micron, digraph CH, underline. Will you read just the root word first, starting PR? Get ready. Per each whole word, preaching. You got it, preaching. 24 box your suffix ED. Root word diphthong OW says ow, arc it. We read just the root word starting DR. Get ready. Dur, own, whole word, drowned. Drown. Drowned is kind of a sad word because do you know what it means when you can't swim in the water and then you die? Drowned. 25, final syllable G L E. Bracket, cross out, macron the U. Starting B U. Read it. B U, goal, what word? Bugle, and there's a picture of a bugle. Match it. Last one, box your suffix ing. Root word digraph OA says O, underline cross out micron. Will you read just the root word first starting L? Get ready. O, O, D, O word, loading. You got it. Like I'm loading something into my car. Loading. Okay. I told you I would tell you a quick story and I will. It has to do with the word scratching. When I was in first grade, I got the chicken pox and it was terrible because I had these little red bumps all over my whole body and they itched like crazy. And I told my mom, mom, I'm so itchy and I just keep scratching. And my skin was starting to turn all dry and flaky and cracked because I was itching it so much. So my mom said, I have just the thing for you. And I heard her go into the bathroom and I heard her turn on the water and I thought, oh good, she's gonna let me take a warm bath. So I went in and I was all ready. I said, mom, what a good idea. Uh, and I stopped because my mom had some oatmeal in a packet and she was taking the oatmeal and dumping it into the water. And I said, uh, mom, what are you doing? And she said, it's called an oatmeal bath and it will make you feel so much better. It will soothe your skin and make you feel so much calmer. And I said, mom, oatmeal is for eating. It's not for putting on your skin. And she said, nope, trust me, this is gonna be fabulous. And I said, okay so she ran all the warm water and she had sprinkled in the oatmeal and i took my foot and i put my toe in and even though it felt kind of thick and kind of yucky i put my other foot in and i sat down oh it felt so much better it was the first time all day that i hadn't just itched and itched and itched so I wiggled down under the water and I let my whole body be covered in an oatmeal bath. <laughs> it was so silly. It's the only time in my life I've ever taken an oatmeal bath. But if you get the chicken pox, it's a pretty good idea. It works. Okay, I will see you next time. Goodbye, first graders. Mwah.